G'day trendsetters, I am John with Gravel Cyclist coming to you today with my review of the Sinitus Cycles Node Titanium Gravel, a bicycle hand built in the mountains of Durango, Colorado. Now, if you're a regular to the gravelcyclist.com website or Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel, you'll already have seen my unboxing and features video of this particular bike. Regardless, let's get cracking with the review. Oh look, I'm joined by my little friend Tuesday the dog. Now you might be wondering, who is Sanitas Cycles? Well, I mentioned earlier they're based out of Durango, Colorado, but the team at Sanitas has over 60 years experience in the cycling industry and 30 of those years of experience, including the fabrication of custom bicycles. In fact, one of the co-founders, John Segrist, has seen everything there is to see from starting a titanium bicycle company back in the late 1980s and collaborating, working with, and designing many other brands, including a few well-known titanium brands that you might be well aware of. You can learn more about Sanitas Cycles at their website, sanitasbikes.com. And the bike. The Sanita Cycles No Titanium Gravel, built from cold worked 3 slash 2.5 titanium. Stating the obvious, the bike features a very unique seat stay slash chain stay junction. Now, it's not my favorite aesthetic, but it certainly does stand out from the crowd. This particular review bike is a size small, which has a 537 millimeter top tube. Now, thanks to some good flexibility, I was able to stretch this bike out to fit myself quite well, utilizing a 110 millimeter stem and a setback seat post. Now, don't forget, bike setup is personal, so what works for me may not work for you. And with that said, if the stock geometry doesn't work for you, Sanitas offers full custom at no extra cost. On to mounting points, there are three bottle cage mounts on this frame. You've got the two on the usual places you'd expect on the down tube and seat tube, and one beneath the down tube, which I like to call the cow catch a position for obvious reasons. Of course, if you desire fender mounts, Sinita Cycles can take care of that for you. Tire clearance is excellent. 700C by 48 millimeters on the rear and on the front, 700C by 47 millimeter. Now this particular fork is by those boffins at number 22 Bicycle Company. Namely, it's their number six gravel fork. Incidentally, I did review one of their fine bicycles. Check that out, linked in the description below. Bottom bracket standard is T47 threaded. You have to love that or English is also available, threaded of course. Segway to the front end, which utilizes a traditional cable management system. No integration, just regular housings that run inside the fork and inside the frame at the top of the down tube. Nothing inside the stem and nothing inside the handlebars, so very easy to maintain. Obviously, it's not as sharp looking as some of those fully integrated front ends. Now, those are all well and good until you have to go and overhaul the bearings, which can be, putting it mildly, a complete nightmare because you have to pull everything apart. And to any know-it-all talkers who might post some comments down below, if you happen to ride rough, dodgy roads as often as I do, these headset bearings can take an absolute pounding versus your sublime paved road. Over to the cockpit parts, which are by my friends at FSA Full Speed Ahead. At the front end, you've got a very interesting narrow flared handlebar, which thankfully didn't piss me off. Not a huge fan of flared handlebars. And the stem, likewise, is by FSA. The seat post measures 31.6 millimeters. Now, I would have preferred if this review bike was fitted with a 27.2 millimeter variant because, in my experience, that smaller size is conducive to some flex and obviously some comfort, which is what we're all about in the long run riding these sorts of bikes. But thankfully, as I mentioned earlier, every Sanitas can be customized, so you can spec 27.2 millimeter if desired. One thing to note about D-Posts, particularly if you're inside a titanium frame, you should utilize some kind of anti-seize material, or in this case, carbon paste. This bike arrived with some grease and, well, the seat post was slipping quite a bit. So I had to affect the roadside repair, namely some 
sand and dirt, stuck it on the sea post and it hasn't slipped since. Over to wheels, these are the FSA AGX SL-K carbon wheel set. What a mouthful, with a claimed weight of 1500 grams. Now I'm not going to be reviewing these wheels separately, but I will say they have been fantastic on this bike. I didn't have to think about them. They've been rock solid. When the bike arrived here at Gravel Cyclist headquarters, they were shod with Maxxis Rambler tires, another fantastic tire in 700C by 40 millimeter. But I opted to swap out for some Panorama Gravel Kings in 700C by 43 millimeter, which are my go-to tire for a lot of my riding. Finally, the grip set on this frame. Now, because every Sunitas is custom, that means you can specify them with grip sets from SRAM, Shimano, Campanolo, or in this case, the ultra wild and crazy Rotor 1x12 speed or 13 speed. This drivetrain can be switched between 12 speed or 13 speed. It is hydraulically actuated. Now, unfortunately, I will not be reviewing it separately, but I'll say this. I reviewed the original Rotor Uno 2x11 speed group set several years ago, and that was a admirable performer, if kitschy. And this group set has proved to be no different. Now, obviously, it's not going to be for everybody. And of interest, I rode a stock for a while with the 11 to 46 Rotor 12 speaker set. And then I spent quite a lot of miles on some flatter terrain riding the Shimano 11 to 34 12 speed cassette. Once again, after a little adjustment, hasn't missed a beat. And of note, I didn't even have to adjust the chain length when I went to the smaller Shimano cassette. And for the keen eyed viewers out there, that is a 42 tooth rotor overlies chain ring. Very spicy indeed. Okay, with all the tech specs covered and so on, now it's time to find out how the Sunita Cycles No Titanium Gravel rides. Fitted with FSA carbon wheels, the wild and crazy road to group set, Penerace Gravel King SK tires in 700C by 43mm, zip, bottle cages and Shimano XTR pedals. This titanium gravel bike is impressively light at about 18.6 pounds. It's very racy geometry, won't be for everybody, but I loved the feeling of speed from this bike in the saddle, out of the saddle, or on the drops, booking along. The seat stay and seat tube junction on this bike isn't the most attractive solution to a bike's rear end. Despite that design feature, this bike's penchant for performance-oriented riding isn't compromised by a hard-as-nails ride over rough road surfaces, even with an oversized seat post at 31.6 millimeters. I would still prefer a 27.2 millimeter seat post on this bike, which the needers are more than happy to build for you. The number six fork by number 22 bicycles is a perfect complement to this frame and undoubtedly aids its nimble handling, which is far from stodgy and slow. The 430 millimeter chainstay is longer than many performance oriented gravel bikes, but you get sweet tire clearance and that slightly longer wheelbase is all part of the comfy ride you attain with this bike, but sands any discernible sacrifices. Food for thought, you don't necessarily need a carbon bike if high zoo performance is a must have. With that said, it's not a bike I recommend for bike packing. You can, however, specify all manner of mounts, making this bike much more than just a one trick pony. The grip set on this bike is pretty interesting. Rotor's hydraulic 1x13 hydraulic shifting group set, or 12 speed in this case. This isn't a group set review video, and this drivetrain isn't for everyone, but I have reviewed the original 2x11 speed Rotor Uno you know, group set, functionally the same as what you're seeing here. It's a pretty reliable group set and shifts perfectly time and time again, even with this tight ratio 11 to 34 12 speed Shimano cassette. However, I will pair this bike with a group set that is more mainstream with better support for those times you're away from home, etc. Adding to the interesting build kit on this bike is this very narrow flared drop bar. It's well known that I don't like flared handlebars, but this one, I really like. If I was so inclined, whilst this build kit is a bit kitschy, a bit edgy, it was all performance and was a good pairing to the Sinitas. The jury is out on these overlized chain rings by Rota, which are absolutely nothing like by pace. So to the troll bike experts, 
save your week as f predictable comments, boring. Moving on, haha. <laughs> Back to the train rings, when I first began riding the bike, my pedal upstroke seemed to receive a free kick, almost like I was being pushed along. An interesting feeling, and maybe I was just getting some free placebo power? Sinitas isn't a household name, and I really hope that changes. I'm not letting the cat out of the bag, but I know they build bikes for at least one other titanium brand, which to me speaks highly of their expertise with titanium. So there you have it, Trendsetters, my review of the Sunita Cycles No Titanium Gravel. At the time of this video, sometime in 2023, there is an absolute plethora of smorgasbord, cornucopia of gravel bikes for your purchasing pleasure. Hello there. So I sincerely hope that my review went some way to helping you make an informed purchase decision. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel for no bullshit gravel bike reviews such as this one, other product reviews, ride experience videos, and of course, General Madness, often featuring this dog. I think they want the dinner. That's right, baby. As all of it is released to the channel, I'll see you, and I'll see you, Faye, in the next video.